Um, so welcome, welcome to the QC Biology Unit 1 to 4 General Senior Syllabus 2025 webinar. Um, my name is Gabrielle, I'm a learning designer on our Biology Units 1 to 4 series. Okay, just before we begin, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. Um, so we acknowledge the traditional owners of the many lands on which we create and share our learning resources. We acknowledge the traditional owners as the original storytellers, teachers and students of the land we call Australia. We pay our respects to elders past and present. We also extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples joining us here today. Um, so I'll just give you a quick overview of today's webinar. Um, so in part one, our two authors, Nat and Jess, will talk you through a summary of the key changes to the structure and content of the new QC Biology General Senior Syllabus. In part two, we've got a bit of an activity to help you understand changes to the new IA2 and IA3 ISMGs. In part three, I'll introduce you to biology for Queensland units one to four. In part four, you'll get some pricing and availability information from our sales team. And part five will leave some time for questions and discussion. Okay, so I'd just like to introduce one of our presenters. So Natalie Quinn, uh, she's the head of science at Wynnum State High School. She's also the author of Oxford Study Buddy, if you've ever used that. And she's now the lead author for Biology for Queensland Units 1 and 2, 4th edition, and she'll be lead authoring the Units 3 and 4 edition as well. Also like to introduce Jess Broadbeck. Um, Jess is a senior biology teacher at Balmoral State High. Uh, she's the author of Biology for Queensland Units 1 and 2, 4th edition. Um, and Jess and Nat would also like to acknowledge their co-author on Biology for Queensland, Matt Michigan. Okay, so I'm going to pass over to Nat and Jess to take you through part one. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for logging on and joining us. Um, so the first part that we're going to go through is some of the key changes moving from the first version of the uh, new biology syllabus 2019 to uh, 2025 version one. Uh, I've spoken with some people from QCAA and it looks like there'll be a few more small revisions coming through at the beginning of next semester, uh, but they will be really uh, small things. Okay, so uh, hopefully by now a lot of you have had the opportunity to engage with the new syllabus version and to have a look at some of the changes that you can expect. Uh, but for those who haven't, Year 11 will be implemented next year in 2025, and then year 12 for the same cohort the following year in 2026. Um, and the, the biology syllabus in particular, it really is smaller refinements rather than uh, large changes or a lot of things removed or, or added. There really are sort of small tweaks um, and refinements that when I read through them and, and in my discussions with QCAA, they make a lot of sense to me why they changed uh, some of those things. Some of the things that, um, you know, we, we've complained about in the past, so that's good. Uh, and the biggest changes really are for the ISMGs, uh, for the IA2 student experiment and the IA3 research investigation. So this is just an overview of the large sort of structural changes to the entire syllabus. Um, so in the, the middle there, you can see the 2019 syllabus version versus on the right hand side, we've got the 2025 syllabus. So the first thing we notice is that it's a lot shorter. It's been cut back from 91 pages to 52 pages. Um, it's still content heavy, but it is more uh, streamlined. I suppose you could call it. In terms of the syllabus objectives, we've gone from uh, seven to six because the communication has been removed and also some reshuffling of the position. So for example, evaluate now comes before uh, investigate. Uh, and in terms of the subject matter, it's now been aligned with the Australian curriculum. So you'll now see the syllabus dot points falling under either uh, science understanding, science as a human, human endeavour, or science inquiry. 
Uh, the suggested research section, which was previously included in the guidance, has now been removed. And this is where we see some of that streamlining and where some of it's been cut back to 52 pages from 91. Uh, I'm sure you've probably heard the mandatory practicals are uh, no longer designated mandatory. Um, and so they'll impair in the interpret cognition in uh, science understanding. And while they're no longer designated as mandatory, I think the idea behind that was uh, QCAA believed some people were incorrectly interpreting this as it being required for the external assessment. And so some of the time that was spent on uh, those mandatory experiments or the way that they were being used in preparation for the external exam was not how uh, originally they had intended for them to be used. And as we know, we're still going to use these in the classroom to support our teaching uh, and in support of student experiments and that kind of thing, but you won't see them referred to as mandatory anymore. Uh, this is really handy, actually. The assessment has now been, uh, it's, uh, it's been pulled apart. So previously it was uh, integrated into the unit three and four descriptives. And now what we're seeing is there's a separate assessment part. So I th what I find is that the syllabus is a little bit easier to navigate and easier to find what you're looking for. Uh, and of course, we've got the revised ISMGs, which we'll be looking at shortly uh, as part of an online activity. And the glossary where it was included in the 2019 syllabus has been paired back and just really looking at those cognitive verbs only as part of the glossary. So I will hand over to Jess and she'll take us through some of the changes to the syllabus dot points. Thanks, Nat. Um, so it would be awesome if we could spend uh, heaps of time going through each of the syllabus objectives and how they've changed. Um, but here are just some of the main kind of key changes. Uh, so for units one and two, uh, what used to be just two topics is now being expanded to the four. So rather than it being cells, spaces of life, and then multicellular as a whole topic, the multicellular has been uh, expanded out into three topics. So looking at animal systems, uh, with exchange of nutrients and waste, then a separate one looking at cellular energy and gas exchange, and then plant systems as its own uh, topic. So what this means is um, those syllabus objectives had to be a bit more condensed. One of the biggest changes I noticed when I sat down and had a look through these curriculums was the change to the cognitions. So there was obviously quite a large glossary of uh, verbs that we're having to explicitly teach students, but those have actually been removed. So there are far fewer uh, cognitions that students are expected to be able to do on those final exams. So, you know, all your recalls and recognises, defines actually have been removed and it's more your describes, explains, interprets and identifies. What this will mean um, in terms of a bit of a, a pressure point for new teachers is there's a little bit less structuring to these syllabus points. So experienced teachers who have taught the previous syllabus will have a pretty good understanding of what needs to be taught for those syllabus objectives, but they're a little bit less scaffolded in the syllabus objectives now. So there's a lot more thought having to go behind, okay, what will students need to be able to do to be able to say, explain the relationship between photosynthesis um, and um, the vascular structure of a plant. Uh, so under um, of all these syllabus objectives, there's been quite a number that have just been reworded to fit these new cognitions. So, for example, uh, recall that stem cells originate through the process of mitosis has been reworded to a describe cognition. So describe how cells, uh, stem cells originate rather than recall. There are a few other key changes in this unit. So phagocytosis has been moved to immunology, so it's not taught with the transport unit anymore. Um, epidemiology has been added um, under unit two, topic two, so it's no longer just immune system. Um, and there's a few other things that have just been removed. So oxy, uh, oxygen disassociation graphs and all those calculations that go with that are no longer expected under that gas exchange and uh, function of gills is completely gone as well. So it um, do, doesn't mean it, you can't teach it, it just means that it isn't explicitly stated in uh, the syllabus objectives anymore. So still might be a useful thing to do as a bit of a comparison, 
uh, to help with um, students understanding gas exchange, but it's much more focused on human, human systems now. The units three and four, there isn't a huge amount of change to the content. So the evolution unit is almost identical, but um, again, it's just the, the removal of those um, smaller cognitions up to just having those larger describe and explain cognitions. So um, there, there's a couple of noticeable things that have been changed. So when it comes to transcription factors, the uh, explicit teaching of the SRY gene is no longer listed as an objective, only the Hox gene, and the UNIS classification system has been removed from the syllabus. So again, it may be um, appropriate for your student experiment, for example, to still teach UNIS as an as a ecosystem classification if you're in um, a marine ecosystem, but the only ones in that syllabus that are expected are the specs and the Holdridge. Um, so there's quite a few things that have been moved to um, the Sciences in Human Endeavour uh, objective now rather than um, a science understanding. So, for example, um, the uh, classification of ecosystems for effective management has been moved to a science inquiry rather than an understanding. So more focused on the actual skill behind classifying and its purpose. Um, another big change is that cladistics has been removed from Unit 3 and it has been moved to Unit 4, um, which I know I've always taught it there, but um, again, it's one of those feedbacks, I think, from staff, uh, from, you know, teachers, is it probably fits that evolution unit a little bit more. Um, another kind of big change is that all objectives are now as assessed in IA2 and IA3. So in the past, the objective one in terms of science understanding and students um, showing their understanding of content wasn't assessed in the IA2 and IA3, only in the exam. So what this means is that students in um, 11 and 12 can get their QCE point if they do choose to move out of the subject after each unit. So they will still be eligible to get that because they will have actually met all objectives. Um, uh, so Nat already mentioned that the mandatory practicals are no longer mandatory. Um, and then a couple of other things that have been kind of added um, is uh, the explicit teaching of uh, joining up Okazaki fragments wasn't actually listed in the 2019 syllabus, but that has been added into this uh, revised syllabus. Uh, and again, some of those verbs that we may have gotten used to, like contrast, are no longer no longer in there, only compare. And this is to make it a little bit more um, aligned to how verbs are used every day. So, you know, go and ask most adults and you say compare and contrast, they'll say they're the same thing anyway. So they've just moved to just compare. Uh, other than that, um, the other one that hasn't been mentioned is that the exemplars are going to be remo removed for the IA2 and IA3. Uh, most schools will have a great bank of amazing exemplars from previous years that are probably a bit more applicable to your school context. So the QCAA are going to be removing the given um, exemplars for IA2 and IA3. I will hand back over to Nat to run through this activity for um, comparing IA2 and IA3 ISMGs. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> I'm excited because we're going to, uh, well, it's exciting to have a look at the the old and the new ISMGs side by side, firstly on paper, that's fun. Uh, but also we're going to use this technology and I may need um, Gabby to jump in and give me a hand at some point if things don't go quite right, but let's give it a try. So the first thing that you need to do is to grab your phone or if you've got an iPad there or on your computer, um, go to slido.com. Or if you are going to do it on your phone, give it a try and you can just scan the QR code on the screen. Uh, otherwise, there's, there's a code there you can join. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to give you the two ISMGs uh, from the previous syllabus, so from 2019 uh, for IA2 and the new one from 2025 side by side. And we're going to have a look at the criteria from each and have a look for the significant changes and then respond on the Slido. That's what we're going to give a try. I'm excited for it. So I'll just give you a minute to do that before we jump ahead and show you the examples. 
Okay, so I can see that everybody's getting the hang of how to use the Slido. That's great. Um, some people are noticing the forming and the finding changes. Uh, five marks instead of six, which is really good too. So the one we're looking at at the moment, uh, where are we? So yeah, we're looking at the forming and finding and we can see that some of those communication criterion are popping up in there. So uh, if you look right at the top at the four to five marks range, we can see fluent and concise use of scientific language and representations, which was previously in communication. So that's now uh, being absorbed into uh, the other sections of the new ISMG. So if everybody's happy for me to move on, I might click on to the next slide, go to the next slide, which is analyzing. Okay, so here are the analyzing 2019 and 2025. And we'll have a couple of minutes just looking at that. So I might just jump in and, and speak to this now that we can see it there on the board. So one of the first things that you're noticing is that it's more succinct, simplified criteria. And the first thing you can see is just that it's smaller. It takes up less space on the page, um, which is great. Uh, lots of positive things about it here too. So uh, only three criteria. So again, an odd number of criteria like the previous section. Uh, no marks for raw data keeps popping up again too. So that's true. Now we've got um, so under this section here, we've got conclusion relevant to. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh no, oh here it is. Sorry. Okay, correct and relevant processing of data, but not that um, sufficient raw data. Uh, identification of the trends, patterns and relationships that we're used to seeing and thorough and appropriate identification of the uncertainty and the limitations of the evidence. So I think we've pretty much covered that one. That's great. Thank you for all your contributions. This is the one uh, that I was accidentally referring to before. So if you can have a look here at the interpreting and evaluating and jump onto the next Slido section and hopefully we've got the hang of it now. So some of the words we're seeing here, again, simplified and succinct. And again, we can see that it's, it's taking up that less Based on the page, there are less words, and so and it's it's less wordy. Uh, we've got uh, what else have we got here? Simpler, aligned to interpreting and evaluating. Fewer words. The and or extensions. Somebody has pointed out. that is. So suggested improvements and or extensions for that two to three range. Uh, whereas the four to five range has suggested improvements and, and extensions. So that is something that's slightly. Yeah, so I think Nat just cut out towards the end there. Um, so those are just looking at the IA2 um, criteria, but um, it's a good idea to have a look through the IA3 criteria as well. It's also a good activity that you guys can run um, in your schools, working with your faculties for your planning for next year's investigations. Okay, 
So I'm going to introduce you to Biology for Queensland Unit 1 to 4. Uh, so just a quick overview of Biology for Queensland Units 1 to 4. It's a fully revised teaching and learning resource for the Biology General Senior Syllabus. Um, we've included clear learning intentions and success criteria that are mapped to the syllabus. And we've developed and designed this resource to reduce cognitive load. Um, so, oh, I'm just checking my camera on. Um, so, yeah, we've broken down a complex scientific concepts into more accessible language. We've also broken down these topics into really easy, easy to digest chunks. Uh, we've removed a lot of the extraneous content that was existing in our previous edition. And we've included things like data drills uh, to build skills for IA1 and science inquiry. We've also improved just the general design of this resource. Um, so biology for Queensland units one to four is also built for flexible use. So schools can choose to use uh, a range of products to support the way you want to teach, whether that's print or digital only or a blended print and digital mode. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at some of the key features of the student books. Okay, so we have a brand new structure. So our units are broken down into their topics and then their topics are broken down into modules, which you would have previously referred to as chapters, and they're broken down into lessons. So we've chucked the content to reduce cognitive load and guide your teaching. Uh, we also have these great module opening spreads to um, inspire students and link relevant syllabus content. We've got prior knowledge quizzes at the start of every module, they're accessible online, and that assesses some of the understanding that students will need before starting a concept. And we will recommend um, any support resources to fill any gaps that are detected on that quiz. Uh, we've got our re relevant practical signposted right at the start of each module. And we've also got a standalone biology toolkit module at the very start to support students develop their science inquiry. Okay, so here we have a lesson opener from uh, Biology 1 and 2 book. Um, you can see at the very start, we've got our key ideas presented as concept statements to help focus student attention. Uh, at the start of every lesson, we also include learning intentions and success criteria that break down those specific syllabus objectives. Um, and that's for every lesson, and they're available on Oxford Digital. Uh, we've organised all of our lessons to support our live lesson mode, which you'll get to have a look at in a little bit. We've got really clear navigation both in the print book and on our digital platform. And we've included things like study tips and key definitions in the margins to support our point of learning. Uh, so we've got some new features we've added in as well. So we have skill drills to help students practice their science inquiry skills in the context of the concepts that they're learning in lessons. We've also included data drills at the end of every module, and that's to help students practice for their IA1 data test. It also just provides them with practice for some generally good data skills to support science inquiry. We've got our real world biology to provide links to subject matter that are quite engaging. Um, so our science as a human endeavor spreads that you might be familiar with from our previous edition, they've been transformed into kind of smaller snippets of real world biology. And we've embedded these into different lessons to provide potential avenues for students to explore in IA3 and also just inspire students with some engaging content and links to how the content is special or relevant to their lives. Um, we've also got questions for each of those activities to help students connect to she and to science understanding dot points. And we've included lots and lots and lots of practice questions. So this is based off some feedback we got from um, interviewing teachers and some of the things they wanted to improve. And that was more questions. Um, so at the end of every Check Your Learning at each lesson, we've got a bunch of questions in our Check Your Learning section. Um, at the end of every module, we've improved the questions and the amount of questions at that. Um, we've also included the addition of topic reviews. So that's another section of questions that reviews concepts and the topics. And we've also got our unit reviews. Um, so these questions are bolded with their cognitive verbs. Uh, we've also scaffolded these questions according to their cognitive verb category. And so they're building up from the very, very fundamental skills up to their higher order skills. Um, total marks are also provided for all of these questions. So students really get a good practice of working with mark allocations. Uh, to support exam success, we've included exam essentials. 
Um, so these provide students with exam tips that they can put into practice. And then we model a high scoring and a low scoring response that's annotated and walks students through how an a tip has been applied to a response. And students can see the effect that this tip has if you do apply it and if you don't apply it. Um, we've also got our Think Like an Examiner section, which asks students to apply both their understanding of that tip that they've just learnt and their content knowledge to help mark exam questions. Okay, and our practicals. So earlier they mentioned that the mandatory packs have gone, but a lot of them have been snuck into the science understanding under those interpret cognitions. So we've made sure that we're supporting you teach that content with packs when they're necessary. Um, and to help students reach all of their science inquiry requirements. All right, so now we'll take a look at some key features of our digital platform and products. Okay, so we have a brand new Oxford Digital, and this is based off the feedback we've gotten from teachers and students around Australia. So we've reimagined Oxford Digital and rebuilt it to support teaching and learning in new ways. Um, so our main goals with this platform are to engage students and improve performance. And we're trying to do that by offering learning design principles that improve engagement, retention and performance. We've made our content fully accessible and we've also integrated more questions and activities to engage students. And we're also trying to support teachers and save you time by offering flexibility. So this platform is really great for supporting in-class or online instruction, um, digital only and blended options. Our live lesson mode provides fully integrated, timed and sequenced online lesson support. And we're offering insights through powerful data and reporting tools. Okay, we've also got some new partnerships that we've embedded into our new platform. So we've got Quizlet to replace that flashcard glossary and that you can do some pretty fun revision activities with Quizlet. Uh, we've got Linosity, so this is the platform we use for our auto and teacher mark questions and they also help generate our results and curriculum reports which students and teachers can access. Um, and then we've also got a partnership with ClickView. So we've gone through ClickView and we've curated a selection of syllabus aligned videos and we've embedded them right into the resource so it's really easy to find video content. Thank you for all joining. Um, we do have some time now just to go through some questions. Um, if you had anything to ask to me or to Nat or to Jess. Um, so feel free to pop any questions you had or anything you'd like to discuss in the chat. Um, leave that open, see if we get anything. Okay, so will online resources allow for accessibility? Um, yeah, um, so we have changed. So this platform is much more accessible um, with screen readers. Um, it actually, like the reflowable text, allows for screen readers to be used. Um, just quit. Um, can the lessons be edited? So they can be edited in the sense that you can tailor your lessons. So you can see the lesson activities that we suggest. You don't have to do any, like all of them. Um, you're you're also able to add notes as well um, on the side. Um, but they won't present to the student, so those notes will just be on the teach end. Um, but you can add prompts, so then when you go into that lesson mode, um, kind of like what appears on the side in your teacher view that doesn't get shown to the students. Um, yep. What type of tree is on the cover of the one and two textbook? Um, I'm not actually sure. I didn't pick that image, so <laughs> I'm not sure. I can find out for you, Monique, um, if you would like. Um, just give us your email and I can actually get that for you. Um, yeah, I think. Okay, Jess is covering it. Thanks, Jess. Please um, feel free to share your feedback. Nat, did you have any last thoughts? No, I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming in and listening to us. Um, I think that's all. I'm always happy to answer any questions too if you think of some at a later time. Yeah, cool. 
Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Remember, if you did have any questions, you can still just forward them to us after this session. Um, and we'll try and get back to you with some more specific feedback or if there's anything you think of later. Um, but we really, really appreciate you giving us your time today and you all have a lovely night. Thanks so much.